Hi, in this lesson we need to talk about timescales and particularly how long it takes for rock cycle processes to actually occur. We've been talking a lot about the rock cycle and the different parts of it but we need to think about um, how quickly they happen. Now geologists have two sort of approaches to this what we call catastrophism and gradualism and we need to explore these ideas in a bit more detail. We're working on pages 10 and 11 of our theme one booklets okay let's go. Now these ideas of catastrophism and gradualism were hotly debated at the uh, in the early days of geology people trying to reconcile a, a biblical view of the world which um, sort of assumed a, uh, a, an age of the earth of going back about 6,000 years compared to what um, gradual geologists like James Hutton for example saw where he could see very slow gradual changes uh, to geological um, materials taking place over unimaginably huge periods of time. We now perhaps have a, a slightly more um, finely tuned idea about this, in that we can see how some processes are gradual and some processes are catastrophic. What we mean by that is that some processes are going to take a long period of time to occur, Oh, and I'm talking long in geological time here, so maybe hundreds of thousands or millions of years. Others, though, are catastrophic, and they occur very quickly, maybe over a matter of even minutes uh, or even maybe years. What I'd like us to do is explore uh, some of these ideas, to have a go um, at trying to interpret this. If you look on page 10 you'll see there's a whole host of different geological uh, processes listed there. What I'd like you to do with that list is decide which of these processes are gradual and which are catastrophic. Write in uh, your idea underneath the photograph uh, for each one of those examples. So press pause now and have a go at the question on page 10. Okay then, let's see what you've come up with. The first of these images is of a meteorite impact crater. This one's actually in Arizona, and it's actually a fairly recent one, which is why it still looks like a, uh, an impact crater. This is clearly a catastrophic uh, event. This, uh, the formation of this crater would have taken a fraction of a second. It doesn't really get much more catastrophic than that. Our next one is a volcanic eruption. This is a particular eruption um, captured on uh, a satellite. Uh, it's actually in a place called Kamchatka in the far, far east of Russia. Uh, a volcanic wilderness. Uh, amazing place. An eruption like this is going to be rapid. This is a, another catastrophic event. Notice it doesn't have to be catastrophic in terms of being dis disastrous. We're talking here strictly in terms of time. This particular eruption, for example, wouldn't have caused anyone any problems because hardly anyone lives in Kamchatka. This is about the fact this eruption would have happened quickly. It makes it catastrophic. Our next image shows the results of river erosion. This is an image of part of the uh, the Grand Canyon. This process would have been gradual. The These rocks uh, around the river here and in the deepest part of the Grand Canyon um, the river is about um, a kilometre and a half, about a vertical mile below the edge of the canyon. All of that, all of that rock, and the Grand Canyon is hundreds of kilometres long, all of that rock would have been eroded away 
one grain, one little gra grain of sand, one little uh, particle of mud at a time. So this process is going to be a gradual one. This picture, uh, this is a, a mountain called Half Dome uh, in Yosemite National Park uh, in California, USA. This is made of granite. And this granite cooled deep in the crust. Because it cooled deep in the crust, it um, was well insulated from losing heat and would have cooled very, very slowly. If you actually go to visit this, you see very big crystals of um, different minerals making up this, this granite. So this would have been a gradual process. The next one, deposition of sand on a beach. Again, this is going to happen grain at a time. This is going to be a fairly gradual process, although there is the potential for some catastrophic changes uh, in the aftermath of big storms. But generally, the formation and deposition of sand is going to be gradual. The rock you're looking at here is a metamorphosed sandstone. Now, for metamorphism to occur, a rock's got to be um, put under pressure, it's got to be heated, and that's going to come with depth in the earth. So a sandstone, which forms at the earth's surface, has to be buried very deeply. That takes time. The, t the pressure and the heat, then, that builds up to change this rock also takes time. So this process is going to be gradual. This image shows us some of the aftermath of uh, a 1994 earthquake in Los Angeles. Um, kill, only killed a couple of people, but caused massive disruption, mostly because of uh, the effect on uh, highways and bridges, made it difficult to move people around or to bring supplies into the city. This particular event only lasted uh, a minute or two. It, it's a uh, it's a catastrophic event again not because of the damage but because of the time that this event lasted for this type of damage isn't that unusual in a, an earthquake bridges are particularly vulnerable um, to breaking uh, where the vertical support meets the the roadway This image shows the folding of limestone. So we can see the layers of solid rock um, exposed in this quarry uh, have been bent. They've been bent by extreme pressure from plate tectonics. But if a rock's going to bend like that, the stress is going to be applied gradually. If the stress is applied very quickly, the rock will break. The fact that the rock here is bent shows us the stress is a, is a gradual one. This is an image from the Boxing Day tsunami from 2004. Um, a horrific event uh, killed a lot of people. And an event such as this, I think, is catastrophic in every, to, uh, every meaning of the word, both in terms of its, uh, of its effects but for this particular exercise, this is a rapid event. It's catastrophic. The deposition of mud in the ocean, on the other hand, though, is very gradual. The deep ocean is a very low energy environment. Tire, the little smallest bits of mud make their way out to the deep ocean and then will slowly sink uh, to the, the seabed and then over a long period of time thicknesses of mud will build up the rate that this happens is the, the best explanation I've heard it's like dust accumulating on your windowsill it's the same type of speed that that would happen so what we can find in a short a fairly small sequence of sediments like this is actually deposition over quite a long time this is a, this is a very gradual process. A 
the uplift of rocks forms mountains. This is uh, in the Himalayas. And this, this one is a tricky one. To form mountains takes several million years. The Himalayas, for example, may be 10 to 15 million years old. They're the fairly recent mountain range. So you could argue that the uplift of rocks like that is gradual. However, that uplift happens as a result of a whole series of catastrophic events. We see them manifest themselves as, as earthquakes. That's where the rock's breaking and being pushed up. So the Himalayas uh, do experience some big earthquakes. For example, 2015 earthquake in, in Nepal. So for this one, I think you can put both. You can certainly argue it both ways. Mountain building is a, overall is gradual. But the events that actually create that uh, process are catastrophic. Okay, we also have uh, submarine flows into ocean trenches. These are like underwater rock avalanches uh, going down into the deepest part of the ocean. These are very fast, very powerful flows uh, of water and sediment and are catastrophic. We see the effects of uh, deposition of these, uh, for example, in mid Wales. A lot of the rocks in mid Wales were uh, laid down as these submarine avalanches. Okay then. Let's see if we can put that into effect now on some real geological data. The diagram that you have at the top of page 11 is a paleontologist's record of a fossil deposit in Nebraska in the US. It's a place called Ashfall Fossil Beds. What we see here is a collection of fossils of uh, perhaps some surprising animals. Uh, horses, you would expect. Deer, same. But we also find uh, fossil rhinos and fossil camels in North America. Now, we, what I'd like you to do is to decide whether this event was uh, catastrophic or gradual. Now, to do that, you've got several bits of information. Firstly, you've got this fossil diagram. Have a look at these fossils. How are they um, spread out? Are they fossils together? Are they, are they been broken apart? Has anything been along to, to eat these fossils after they died? You know, how are these uh, fossils actually preserved? Think about what we looked at before when we were looking at the preservation of um, the stegosaur, the dinosaur national monument. So look carefully at the fossils. There's also two videos to back up um, this that describe more of the geology. Um, there's one on the Ashfall Fossil Bed State Historical Park, and there's another one on the geology of Ashfall. Watch those videos before you start to uh, write any ideas down. So I'd like you to tell me whether these are, whether you think this is catastrophic or gradual. And crucially, I want you to explain why. What reasons do you have? Well, how can you back up your conclusion from this based on the evidence from the geology? If you want, bullet point your answer, write an extended paragraph, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that you can reach a conclusion and then back it up with geological evidence. Okay, I'm going to let you get on with that and we'll um, discuss uh, what I think in the next lesson. Uh, I'll leave you a picture uh, of uh, uh, another interesting place just down the road from, uh, from Asheville. This is a place called Carhenge, where some crazy people decided to uh, build a, a, a full-size replica of Stonehenge, but in old American cars. Anyway, not really geological, but you know, nice picture. So, have a go at that. Is Asheville catastrophic? Is it gradual? We'll talk more about the answers, but that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.